Good morning, everyone. You're very good morning. So, shall shall I start? In the in the last class, we have finished with the select project, and then uh, today's topic, first topic, is the natural join. This is similar with the Cartesian product. In the last class, we have finished with that one also. But uh, Cartesian product means two relations are combined. Okay, so wait for another five minutes. Where is Larry? Okay. So let's start again. Now, our topic is a natural join that is the same as a Cartesian product that simplifies a query that requires a Cartesian product. Usually a query that involves a Cartesian product includes a selection operation also and the result of a Cartesian product. And whatever the selection operation most often requires that all the attributes that are common to the relation that are involved in the Cartesian product may be equated or can be equated. So in our example query that combine the information from the instructor and the teacher's table, the matching condition required instructor.id uh, to be equal to the teachers.id and these are the only attributes in the two relations that have a same name. So natural join is a binary operation that allows us to combine certain selections and the Cartesian product is also equated out in the various field in one operation that means we, we are allowing or we we uh, binary operation that allows and combine or allow us to combine the certain selections and the Cartesian product so and that means whenever I want to join the Cartesian product whenever I, I want to join the Cartesian operation product into one operation so we use a join that means combine combination of the both It is denoted by the join symbol that is that is a part of the Cartesian product and the natural join also or operation forms a Cartesian product of the two argument that is from the one relation to the another relation or the attribute that appears in both the relation schema and finally remove the duplicate attributes. Now if I go back to the previous example that that includes the two relations to table that is the instructor and the teaches. So computing the instructor natural join that teaches the constraint only those pair of tuples where both the tuples from the from the instructor and the tuple from the teaches. Now this is the natural join of the instructor and the teaches relation. Now can anyone tell me what yeah can anyone tell me the names of the fields over here? And how many tuples are available? Now, what is the degree of this table? This is combination of table, but this is now a single table, single relation. So what is the degree and the attribute of this relation? The degree degree are the seven over here. Sorry, eight over here. Yeah, and attributes. Yeah, seventeen attributes. Right, correct. So the main motto is this is not the uh, correct scenario over here, but just I'm asking you to get the knowledge. So uh, the main thing is that we are joining with the natural join of two tables that is the instructor and the teachers. Now this contains a certain tuple that one have been given the instructor about the instructor and the code that an instructor actually teaches. Notice that we do not repeat those attributes that means there is not a repetition in the table in the schema of both the relations that rather they appear only one that means there is no duplicate data over here and notice also that the order in which the attributes are listed out first the attributes common to the schema of both the relations so first of all all the attributes that is available with the schema of both the relations second those attributes that is unique to the schema of the first relation so first yeah first of all common among the two relations then second one is 
what are the unique things that is available in the one relation and finally the attributes that are unique to the second relation and all the definition of the natural join is complicated but we illustrated with the example that is for example if I want to find out the names of the instructors together with the course ID of all the instructors they told me. So this is the yeah this is the example for output we can see here it is using the pi so Larry my question is to you this is the projection operation project operation or this is the select operation Yes, very good. Project operation because we are fetching out the fields over here. So this is a pi name and the course ID. So we are taking out only two fields, that is the name and the course ID, by combining the instructor and the teacher. How do I know that I combine the instructor and the teacher? Because this is the natural choice symbol. That merging. So that merges the two table, that is the instructor and the teachers. So first of all, uh, there are the two fields that is the name and the course ID that is combined with the two tables that is the instructor and the teacher and since the schema for the instructor and the teachers have attributes ID in the comma so natural join consider only those tuples that have the same value on the ID because first first thing that uh, that we are fetching out that the attribute that is common between these two tables so ID is common in these two tables then it combines such pair of tuple into the single tuple as a union of the two schema that is ID name department name salary course ID and after performing the projection we get the result uh, this is the result over here ID is same but we are uh, taking out only two fields name and the course ID these are the names and these are the course ID for this So instructor and the teacher's relations are combined together to get the output. Next is assignment operator. In C language, it is denoted by the equals to and this SQL, it is convenient to write a relational algebra expression by assigning the parts of it to the temporary relation variables. And the assignment operation denoted by the arrow works like assignment in the programming language. And to illustrate this operation, consider the definition of the natural join. So we could write are natural join with the S. So in attempt one, we are taking out with the multiplication with the Cartesian product of the R and the S that is covered in or that is uh, supplied in the temp one. Then the pi R A1 S A1 R A2 S2 and so on till the S that is in the temp one. The result is combination of the union of the R and the S and the temp two. The evaluation of an assignment does not result in any relation that is being displayed to the user. Rather, the result of the expression to the right of the assignment is being issued to the relation variable on the left of the assignment. And this relation variable may be used in the subsequent expressions. And with this assignment operation, a query can be written out as a subsequent sequential program that consisting of a series of the assignments. that is followed by an expression whose values is displayed as a result of the query. And for the relational algebra queries, assignments must always be made to a temporary relation variable. And these assignments to the permanent relation constitutes a database modification assignment operation that does not provide any additional power to the algebra and that is however a convenient way to express the complex query. Now next is the outer join. So we have done with the natural join, that is for the inner parts, one is the outer join. This is, an, this is an extension of the join operation to deal with the missing information. Suppose that there is some instructor who teaches no course. Then the tuple in the instructor relation for that particular instructor would not satisfy the condition of a natural join with the teacher's relation. Why? Because uh, these are the various attributes that is used for the instructor as well as, as, well as the teacher, but there is a outer join from this. So this is just like opposite of the natural join. So some tuples are lost out, some tuples are common that is the join may be lost in this way and the outer join operation also works in a manner similar to the natural join operation that we already did. But reserve the tuple that will be lost in an join by creating the tuples in the result. And we can use the outer join operation to avoid this loss of information.
and there are actually three forms of operation one is a left one is left outer joint one is a right outer joint one is a full outer joint left means taking out from the left values of the relation right right values or right attributes and full means from the right as well as from the left and all three forms of outer joint computes the joint and add extra tapas to the result of the joint for example, the result of expression instructor teaches teaches instructor appears in receptively. And the left after joint takes all the tuples in the left relation that does not match or did not match with any tuple in the right relation. Pads the tuple with the null values for other attributes also from the right relation. And then adds them to the relation or result of the natural joint. And figure this one, the tuple is uh, sufficient or is as uh, such as a tuple and all the information from the left relation is present in the result of the left outer joint. So right outer joint is symmetric with the left outer joint. It pads uh, tuples from the right side or from the right relation that does not match any 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 from the left relation with the nulls and add them to the result of a natural joint. In this example, the tuple this one null 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 califeria, this one that is a five this one, this tuple. It's such a tuple, therefore all the information from the right relation is present in the result of a right outer joint. And the full outer joint does both the left and the right outer joints operation that padding the tuples from the left operation did not match or did not match any from the right relation as well as tuple from the right relation that does not match or did not match from the left relation and adding them to the result of the And note that in, uh, in going from the left outer joint to a right outer joint example, we chose to swap the order of the operation. Therefore, both the example preserves the tuples from the inspector relation and therefore contains the same relation. And in our example relation, the teaches tuple always have a matching inspector tuples. Therefore, teaches instructor would give the same result as the teaches and the instructor. And if there were tuples in the relation, in the, in the teaches relation without matching, Tuples in the instructor, such tuples would appear padded with the nulls in the teachers as well as the instructor's relation. And since the outer join operation may result or may generate the result containing the null values, we need to specify how the different relational algebra operation deal with the null values. And that deals in the context of the SQL. And it is also interesting to note that the outer joint operation can be expressed with the basic relation with the operations. The next is extended relational zebra operation that is not in your course. Aggregation, functions, only the names are required, multi-site functions. Now next is the domain relational calculus. Just do one thing, read out for five minutes. If there's any doubt, then please add the doubt. So otherwise we'll start with the next topic. That is the domain relational calculus. All right. Now the next topic is domain relational calculus. So a second form of the relational calculus, that is a domain relational calculus that uses the domain variable that take on the value from an attribute domain rather than the value for an entire tuple. And the domain relational calculus that is closely related to the tuple relation calculus and this calculus serves as a theoretical basis for the, the widely used QBE language such as the relational algebra serves as the basis for the SQL language. And the formal definition that is used in the domain relation calculus is of the form x1, x2, xn, then p x1, x2, xn, where x1, x2, xn denotes or represents a domain variable or represents a domain variable that represents a formula composed of the eight terms as well as in the case of the tuple relational calculus. Now what is the atom that is of the any form, any variable, any, and anything that you want to ask or anything that, that have a various attribute, domain variable, domain calculus, domain thing and that is the comparison operator and C is a constant in the domain of the attributes for which X is a domain variable. 
and we build up the formula from the atom by using the following rule that is atom is a formula and p is a formula so uh, negation of p and p1 are the same and p1 and p2 are the formula then so p1 is uh, denoted with the p2 and the p1 is denoted with the p2 and the p1 is arrowing with the p2 and if p1 x is a formula in the x where x is a free domain variable then by x p1 x v v1 x are also called formula and there is a notational shorthand we write the phi a b c that is for the each and every example now what are the various example let's see what are the various example for the relational domain relation calculus for that is considered earlier so note that the similarity of these expressions and the corresponding values the tuples contains a relation calculus example so find the instructor ID, name, department, name, salary from instructors where salary is greater than 80,000. And find all the instructor ID for the instructors whose salary is greater than 80,000. And although the second query appears similar to the one that we wrote for the table relation calculus, so there is an important difference. And in the table calculus, we write phi s for the tuple variable s. And so we bind it immediately to a relation by writing this one. However, when we write this one in the domain calculus, so that refers not to a tuple rather than for a domain value. Therefore, the domain of a variable n is unconstrained until the subformula instructor constraint that n to the instructor name that appears in the instructor relation. So we now give several examples of the queries in the domain relation calculus. So find the names of the, all the instructors in the physics department together with the course ID of all the courses they teach. The I, I A, I C A S Y teaches, then D S, then teaches with the instructor and combines with the physics. Then find the set of all the courses taught in the fall 2009 semester and the spring 2010 semester remote. So find all the students who have taken all the courses offered in the biology department. And then safety of expression that is used with the INDS with the various variables. And the situation for the sub formula of the form phi x p1 x is very similar and to assert or assert that phi x p1 x is true we must in general test all the possible values so we must examine infinitely many values. And as before, if you know the expression is safe, it is very sufficient for us to test the P1X for those values taken from the domain P1. And all the domain calculus or the relational calculus expression is uh, then expressed with the form that is written in the example queries of this section are the safe, except for the example that is unsafe query that we saw earlier. The next is expressive power of the language. So whenever the domain relational calculus is substituted to the safe expressions, so it is equivalent in the expensive or expressive power to the tuple uh, relational calculus that is restricted to the safe expressions. And since we noted earlier that the restricted tuple relational calculus is equivalent to the relational algebra, so all of the three are the equivalent. So first is a basic relational algebra, then tuple relational calculus, then domain relational calculus. And we note that the domain relational calculus also does not have any equivalent of the aggregate operation but it can be extended to support aggregation and extending it to the handle arithmetic expression that is very straightforward with the expressive power of the languages. The next to the summary, so relational calculus or the relational algebra defines a set of the algebraic operations that operates on a table and output table as a result. And these operations can be combined to get the expression that can express with the desired queries. And this algebra defines the basic operation that is used within the relational query languages. So this is combined to get the expression, this is combined that operates on a table, output table as a result. And the algebra defines the basic operation that is used in the relational query languages. 
Now the operation is divided into four parts. Three parts basically. One is a basic operation, select project. One is additional operation that can be exposed in terms of the basic operation. One is extended operation that some of which add further expressive power to the relational algebra. And relational algebra is a terse from a language that is inappropriate for the casual users of a database systems. And the commercial database users also gets verified or therefore will be used So that is expressed in the variable that, that covers with the influence variable SQL that is based on the relational algebra. And there are two parts that is the tuple relation calculus and the domain relation calculus. Are the non-procedure languages that represents the basic power required in a relational query languages and the basic relational algebra is a procedure language that is equivalent in power to the or in forms of the relational calculus when they are restricted to the safe expressions. The next is relational cal calculi that enters from a language that are inappropriate for the casual users of a database system. And these two formal languages form the basis for the two more user-friendly languages. One is a QBE, one is a data law that is covered over here. The next is the review terms. One is a relational algebra, then relational algebra operation select pi, sorry, um, sigma, then project pi union u set difference minus subtraction Cartesian multiplication rename phi. Then assignment operation outer join, tight outer join, full outer join, multi sides, grouping null values, the double relation calculus and the domain relation calculus, then safety of expressions, then expressive power of the languages. Then these are the practice exercises. Write the following queries in this one with the schema or with the university schema in which there are the primary key that are also underlined then division operation these are the various examples that we have already discussed now this is one of the questions that is given with the three relations in a library one is a member one is a box one is a borrowed and that is expressed in the tupper relation calculus and the domain relation calculus for each of the following queries that is repeated with the relational algebra expressions. Now next is the database design that is a part number two that I'm going to start within the next class that is in the Pandas class. We have finished with the database analysis. Now next part is database design that is part number two that we start with will be start with the in that Pandas class. So till now Part one is uh, wind up with the six chapters. So any doubts anyone over here?